Okay, so we're going to start off by looking at the cutaway of the fluid section of the uh, Husky 1050 diaphragm pump. Um, a few enhancements of the 1050 as compared to the 1040, uh, redesigned fluid manifolds, and also we're using a, a new air valve. This, uh, this new air valve, the redesign of the fluid section, allows the 1050 pump as compared to the 1040 pump to uh, have about a 20 to 30 percent more efficient operation. So what that means is, is if you replace this pump um, right here, if you're taking a 1040 out and replacing it with a 1050, that you're going to want to reduce your inlet air pressure by approximately 20 or 30 percent to get the same operation. Okay, so what that means is you're going to have some better efficiencies, reduced air consumption. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about exactly what these diaphragms and the ball checks are doing in this pump. All right, so right now what's happening is, is the diaphragms are moving back and forth. All right, and that air valve right up in here is what's causing that to change. All right, one of the nice things about, or features of, of a diaphragm pump is if I shut off fluid flow to this pump, it's going to stall under pressure. All right, so what's happened right now is it's just stalled under pressure, and I'm going to talk just a little bit about what's going on in the diaphragm area over here. All right, so this diaphragm is pushing in this direction. When it does that, it's creating some pressure, causing this ball up here to lift off of its seat. It's also causing this ball down here to check or to seat. All right, so any fluid that's caught in this, this chamber right here is going to be pushed up and out of the pump. All right. Now, over on the other side, what's going on is this diaphragm is pulling back in. All right. So what it's doing is it's creating a low pressure zone in this area right here. That low pressure zone allows atmospheric pressure to push material right here up and into this area right here. All right. So this check ball right here is up off its seat and also up on the top side because of this low pressure zone, it's causing this ball up here right there to seat down. All right, so this side is loading, and then this side over here is unloading. All right, and now this air valve right up in here, as it's switching directions, basically what it's doing is it's taking pressurized air and putting it either behind this diaphragm or behind this diaphragm right here. All right, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to break away to a different animation and take a little bit closer look at that air valve and what that air valve is really doing.